Hello all, this is Vasavi from At Home Tuition. In this session, we are going to find out how to work out the mean, okay, to find the average of the given data using the direct method as well as the assumed mean method. So, I have already written the formula for the direct method and the deviation. Assumed mean method can also be called as deviation method or indirect method, okay. So, for the direct method, your mean value is equal to sigma f times x, okay, fx divided by sigma f. Sigma is the sum, okay, the sum of the product of fx over the sum of the frequency will give you the mean value, okay. This is the direct method and when we do it in the deviation method or indirect method, or assumed mean method, you will take one value on the on the data given as your assumed mean and then you would find the deviation and you use this formula to do the calculation. I will just show you how to do them by giving you an example. Here's the first question. So in this question they have given you, the table below shows the selling price of 52 cars in a second hand showroom. Okay. So, the price ranging from 0 to 12,500 pounds is given here and the frequency, how many cars have been sold is given under the frequency column. So, they say from 0 to 2,500 pounds, it is 9 cars sold and 2,500 to um, 5,000, it is 13 cars, 5,000 to 7,500, it is 21 cars and likewise they have so made the sales and they ask you to calculate an estimate of mean selling price. So mean is nothing but the average right and you are to give the answer to the nearest pound okay. So I am going to do this problem in the direct method and the class interval is the price given here right. It is from 0 to uh, 2500 so let me write that so here in, let me fill in the class interval column so it is 0 to 2500 and then 2500 to 5000 now 5000 to 7500 next is 7500 to 10,000 and finally it is 10,000 to I've just copied the first column as it is, okay? 10,000 to 12,500. So the price range is given here. And here you find that the class interval here, the, class, the gap is 2,500, okay? Each class you have 2,500. Then the frequency, let us copy down the frequency too. The second column I'm just copying down as it is. So that's 13, 21, 7 and 2, right? Okay, 7 and 2. Now, I'm going to start the calculation. First, I have to find, see, the x value is given as class interval, right? We should have a fixed point to find the mean. So what I do is, the class interval, You, I call this one as lower uh, limit, okay? Here what we write is the lower limit and the number on your left side is the upper limit, okay. Using this lower limit and upper limit in each class, I am going to find the midpoint or the mid value. So I just show you how to find the midpoint. Midpoint will be equal to the sum of upper limit and the lower limit divided by 2. So that will give you the mid value, okay? Lower limit divided, whole thing divided by 2. Sometimes they may directly give you the x value. But in this question, they have given you the class interval. So you have to find out the x value, the midpoint of each class. So here for the first one, I'll just show you how I get this. This is like 0 plus 2500 divided by 2 right so that is 1250 
Likewise, you do for every class and it is 2500 plus 5000 which is 7500 divided by 2. When I do divided by 2, I get 3750. Likewise, you have to calculate the midpoint of each class interval. Okay, By adding the upper and lower limit and dividing it by 2, you get the midpoint. So, you can do like that or we know that the class interval here is 2500, right? Each class, if you see the difference is 2500. You can directly add the 2500 to the previous midpoint to get the next one. Okay, that is, I can also do that way. 3750 plus 2500 would give me 6250. And for the next one, it is 8000. 750 and finally 11,250. The next thing I have to do is find the product of this frequency and the midpoint. Okay, you just multiply these two. Okay, say if this is 1 and this is 2, here I do 1 times 2. So here it is 1,250 times 9, right? So when I do that, I get 11,250, okay? Find the product of first and the second column here. 1 and 2, okay? Then here I would get 3,750 times 13 will give me, I'm using a calculator or you can do it manually like 48,750 and then here, this is 6250 times 21, right? So that would be 1 lakh 31,250. Okay, now you're going to find the total of the frequency. This is sigma f. Okay, the total of frequency. Just add this 9 plus 13 plus 21 plus 7 plus 2. Okay. So that will give me 52 and then now I have to find the total of sigma fx. The last column, the fx also you find the total. So it is 2,75,000. Okay. Now I am going to calculate the mean for the direct method. It is sigma fx divided by sigma f. What is sigma fx? You got it as 2,75,000. This has to be divided by 52. Since they have asked you to round it to the nearest pound, I can say it is 5,289. Okay. Now, the same problem could be done with the assumed mean method also. Okay. The second method is assumed mean method or deviation method. Or you can even call indirect method. For this I have taken another problem. The following data gives the frequency distribution of the ages of 120 children. Calculate the mean by using assumed mean method. So they specify which method to do. If the problem is silent about the method to be adopted, you can stick on to whatever method is comfortable for you. But in case if the problem specifies like which method to do, then you have to stick on to that method only. Okay. So now here you see that the x value is given here and the frequency f value is given. Okay. They say at the age of 8, you have 13 children. 9 years, it is 23 children. 10 years, 25 children. So likewise it goes. So your age is your x value and your uh, the number of children is the frequency. Okay, You can find the difference here between the previous sum and here. In the previous sum, they had given you the class interval and the frequency. So you had to calculate the x value, that is the midpoint, by adding the upper and lower limit and dividing by 2, right? Likewise, you found out the midpoint and you consider that as your x value. Okay. Here, the x value is directly given. So, you needn't calculate all that all again. So, let me just copy down these 
values okay this is what is given also they had mentioned they have given you the total so you needn't even calculate the total of this frequency it is already given as 120 okay so we are done till here right next is you have to find one value from the x as assumed mean you assume that that value would be the mean of this table okay so normally it is better you take the middle value so here i'm going to take this 11 okay so now what you do you have to subtract the assumed mean from each of the x value okay so i'll do the first one the deviation would be 8 minus 11 likewise we have to do for all okay so 8 minus 11 is negative 3 and then here here it is 0 12 minus 11 is 1 2 and 3 okay next thing we do is we multiply as we did earlier we multiply the frequency and x right here after finding out the deviation you can just completely forget about this x column okay just don't bother about the x column this time you are going to multiply the f and the d not the x okay make make this clear you are multiplying the frequency and the deviation this time it is not the midpoint or the x value okay after finding the deviation your x value has nothing to do with the problem now let us multiply these so this will be negative 39 just multiply okay normal multiplication this is negative 46 right here this is negative 25 and 0 times 25 is 0 this is 20 here this is 24 and the last one is 6 now you have to find the total of this sigma fd okay so to find the total first let me add up all the negative values okay so it is minus 110 okay and here you can add up all the positive values so that is going to be 50 so when you add these two what what do you get you get minus 60 okay it is a negative value you're getting minus 60 now let us do the mean okay the calculation mean calculation for assumed mean you have to use a plus assumed mean okay i'll write it as a m a m plus sigma f d over sigma f okay so as per the formula here assumed mean is 11 right that's what you assumed you have written it here so i just write the 11 there plus sigma fd is negative 60 okay over 120 so this will get cancelled and here it is 1 and here it is 2 so that would be 11 this plus times minus will make it minus 0 0.5 right so your x value the arithmetic mean here is 11 minus 0 0.5 so that is 10.5 is your answer so we got the arithmetic mean mean as 10.5 in this case so this is as simple as how we would how we did the direct method in direct method we normally get to find the total with bigger numbers but when you go in for deviation method the the values will be much lesser so your adding and subtracting calculation multiplying everything would be very easy so that is why we go in for this assumed mean method or the deviation method or also the indirect method okay so i just repeat the formula for both the methods once again if it is direct method, all you need to do is find the frequency and the x value product of f and x and find the total of it. Okay, so that is 
sigma fx divided by the total of frequency that is sigma f will give you the mean value and when it is deviation method you have something as you assumed mean to that you add sigma fd this time it is deviation frequency times the deviation remember it is not the mid value or the x value given okay divided by sigma f if you do whatever answer you get you either add or subtract as the case may be to the arithmetic mean and you get the answer for the deviation method i hope both these methods are quite easy now for you see you in my next video till then it's bye from us we bye